what is up guys and welcome to our MNBA Wi-Fi battle of course week two season two I believe no season three hey and we're going up against of course John two or Los Angeles Lucarios now his team looks pretty much the pot uh, it should be said that we see of course Garchomp Tapabulo's sister which was a part of his team together with of course Torrin Greninja that means not any type of other abilities Greninja only Torrent and uh, then we see, of course, Electros and Mistbreed. So they kind of looked apart. There were a few Pokemon that definitely was kind of figure might make it. That was actually Arcanine, Gallade, or Lantern. But other than that, his other Pokemon does not make sense for the matchup. So what I'm facing, it's very, very, very fair. And uh, yeah, like I said, pretty much what I expected to a very, very big extent. Now, I myself is using, uh, of course, self rocking across my within the power of fire, uh, Bandit and Tay with, uh, you know, the status stuff, basically extreme speed and stuff like that. And uh, my Mesprit with, um, I believe, offensive moves only. And uh, we have, of course, Nature Madness and Hidden Power Fire. Mainly here at Hidden Power Fire is for the sister who could possibly come in on it. And uh, then, of course, Barbiri Berry Cure him. And it's mainly here to, of course, be able to take a bullet punch from the sister and Ritiali with also Hidden Power Fire. Special offensive this time around says it offensively did really well against him. Uh, Jolteon, standard stuff, and she has hidden power eyes for the Godchamp, and Scarf Cortana, uh, because it rips through his team, uh, and even of course his sense is in Tapu Bulo, uh, due to the aggressive terrain, it's actually a 2 hit kill on the Bulo, so I do not fear using Cortana to its full extent this Wi-Fi Bell, I in theory only need the rocks, and since he lacks any spinner, if of course the scissor is not a spinner, I should be able to do fairly well, Godchamp of course is... Um, if it is, of course, the standard set with Jolly Max Speed, uh, Cortana has, after Rocks, a pretty high chance of KOing, and you believe it was somewhere around 70, so, it, it, like I said, it made really big sense in the course of this Wi-Fi battle. The only obstacle I have for that is, of course, a sister is completely walling, and uh, it is not able to pull that task off, of course, if the sister is still active. But on that, I should do really well against this team, did not fear this matchup whatsoever, actually. So, yeah, without further ado, let's, of course, go into the match. So, from the get-go here, my opponent will lead off with his Electra. So that was kind of surprising. I was very mesprit, actually. Uh, I decided to lead off with Daos, of course, of mine across my... And I'm gonna take my golden opportunity here and just go for Stealth Procs to get them off the field. If his sister is, of course, like, like I said here, and he's a Defogger, then it shouldn't be able to whittle me down all that much, mainly because I have been a part of Fire. So I should be able to not only outspeed him, but also KO him in return. So here on, I'll just keep attacking the Electros. I don't necessarily fear it. As it goes for Volt Switch, it will actually do a lot of damage. We're definitely enforcing this is a more specially oriented one than physical. So I don't necessarily need to fear, of course, a possible uh, Drain Punch on any of my Pokemon. Now, of course, we see left towards my sisters. I felt all right. It could very well be, of course, that set. We just can go directly for the Hidden Power Fire. Uh, I will not KO if it is a defensive variant, but I will do a lot of damage as he goes for U-turns. I was like, all right, that uh, that dies to rocks now. So that's this this is under control. I could basically <laughs> from here on out just sending Cortana and that will be a wrap. And definitely now, of course, Garchom got some extra, of course, residual damage onto it as he goes for Earthquake. Now here's the thing. If his Garchomp switches in and out one more time, uh, then it's a guaranteed KO from Cortana's Leaf Blade. So I'll just try to find an opportunity to try to send it in without losing any kind of damage onto it. As I send in my Rexy basically to force it out and go for free Moonblast. He doesn't want that, right? You know, heavy damage on anything that wants to come. As uh, Noel, the Mesprit, comes in. It's like, hey, hey, Noel, what's up? Now, hang on this. <laughs> Actually, I do a pull double here. And go to Onreal, right? The predicting the switch out to Mesprit. Actually, predicting the switch out to anything. As we see Leftovers, definitely ensuring that it could have very well be in some kind of defensive variant. Uh, it could have actually Fire Punch if I'm unlucky. But just go for Leaf Blade, just to get the damage there. As you've got the Stealth Rocks up, that's quite alright. So don't fear that. You know, we are in a situation now where what I, if I am a plus one, that's basically wrap. We should have no issues actually you know, winning this Wi-Fi Bell whatsoever. And he doesn't necessarily have a good switch in here to this. As Noel just dies. And uh, poor Mesprit really as uh, he's actually gonna send in his guard shot, which I fear is the Scarf, basically. But since I am that myself, and now he has two Stealth Rock rounds of damage onto it, I know I can guarantee KO him if it wasn't that I wasn't fully speed. Because I'm not. I'm actually fully special defensive, as I sadly was um, seeing during this. Now I'm basically like scratching my head on, you know, what do I do now? 
that that was not supposed to happen. <laughs> and I say this in a way that I messed up. Uh, don't get me wrong here, I still have a very, very good opportunity in this matchup to kind of force him out. I don't necessarily fear him that much, as of course, Stealth Rock does take its fair toll in actually KOing Sister. That's actually KO for him, actually, the. Um, what do you call him? Hey, can't remember. Um, the Necrosmas, hey, how about that? So, anyway, <laughs> Prias comes in, of course, is the Greninja. Uh, now, I could actually just stay in here, even if it goes for hidden power, as I will figure, is Rock. You shouldn't do all too much to me. And I should be able to do some damage onto it as I go for Earth Power. Now, it was a bit unfortunate that I didn't go actually for Rooster, just scouting if I had some kind of hidden power. Uh, and now I need to preserve Rooster to the best of my abilities. I'm just going to send in Gaius basically here because I wanted to force him. And I fear, like I said, that it could have been Hidden Power Rock. Uh, but I actually find out later that it's Hidden Power Fighting. So it doesn't do that much damage onto me. And I was really trying to scare him out here and, you know, forcing him for the extreme speed. I decided to not go for extreme speed, just try to scare him off. As sadly, or I don't know, but I went for Water Shuriken. I don't know if that was a good or bad play. I definitely didn't see it coming. Says choice expanded or <laughs> extreme speed seems so likely. So that's definitely on my fault as I go I bring in Van Height. And uh, I can't necessarily do anything here. It definitely falls to Life Orb afterwards. So I'm basically stuck here. I'm just going to take the residual damage on my Jolteon, hoping it doesn't get too many Water Shuriken hits on me as he scores a crit and gets three hits, I do believe, on me. So we're, we're free falling basically in HP wise. And it's unfortunate, but the Greninja is gone. But damn, did it take a lot of things with him as um, I do believe now comes yet again in the um, Garchomp, I do believe. No, less than three. That's the Electros. And I don't believe I have any good necessarily switching on here. Uh, so I'm just going to decide to go for a Toxic and just rack up the damage onto this Pokemon, basically. Because the only thing it can do is possibly knock off. And I want to get the free switch into my Cure and Black and just start roosting. Because I do believe that's my best course of action. As um, I will be, of course, able to have speed as I should necessarily... Uh, fear is as long as, of course, Garchomp is gone, which is a possibility as long as Kyurem is healthy, I should be able to pull that off. And with, of course, my Araxi or Tapfini, I should be able to deal with, of course, it rather well too. So I'm just gonna roost in Electro Space, and um, yeah, um, he's just gonna go for knockoff, that's the right. And here I was feeling that he was going to go for a hard switch. I think that was his best play and going to Garchomp, so I decided to go for Nice Beam here. As he actually stays in, and that's really, really, really unfortunate because not only does he survive, which is actually quite alright, but he goes for a Volt Switch, getting a slow switch in, and he gets enough damage on me that I won't survive, of course, the Self Frogs, and goes to his Garchomp. And yeah, that's that's a major mess up on my part. She definitely roosted yet again. Um, I don't know necessarily what I was thinking, but as I said here, I thought his smartest option was actually to hard switch to his guard jump over actually going for a Volt Switch, risking of course Electros being gone and actually risking me getting full HP because Outrage would have been his fourth course of action and of course I have this Pokemon to kind of thank for that I can definitely take Earthquakes uh, without any necessarily issue. So with that in mind I definitely think I overestimated my opponent in his way of playing and actually him playing safe actually was really really good because well Let's just say that I think I played a bit too hard meta for my own sake and I definitely pushed myself to situations that I don't necessarily can go into get out of and eventually here I do actually lose uh, because I get too much damage on my Rexy and of course he still has his Tapu Bulu. Tapu Bulu of course has Torn Leech, Woodhammer, stuff like that and it will be more than enough to actually KO me and yeah it's just an unfortunate series of events here because in the end of the day it is I who play rather not, and I wouldn't say badly, but I definitely try to play it a bit too hard for my own good. Have I played it safe like my opponent here, I probably would have actually done a lot better uh, because he never necessarily needed it to go out of his way to do the big plays because his defensive plays was so safe throughout the Wi-Fi Valley in general that I fear I, me playing the way I do just kind of screwed myself over. Uh, don't get me wrong, I think John plays the game right, uh, he, he really really does, and I myself, I was really frustrated after his Wiper Bell, and had a lot to do with my wrong EV on my Cortana, because I would have been able to sweep actually from that point, and had I been fully speed, the Guardian would have dropped due to, of course, two stealth rock damage onto it, because my rolls here were 92 to 97%, so I kind of had it in my favor, 
And I really feel I threw it all away by not overlooking my team properly. So right to the afterthoughts, I really want to just share a few ideas and aspects here that I think frustrated I didn't play the way I did, but at the same time I kind of expected my opponent to see those play and do something about it. The first one is definitely NT situation. Uh, I had a very good opportunity to just spam extreme speed with my Entei. I really thought that he was going to try to preserve his Greninja and get out because it was such a big win con. But instead he actually went for Water Shuriken. I didn't expect that. Uh, I definitely feel that my opponent needed Greninja enough to not risk it. So it's really my fault for not just doing that safely. I actually went for Sacred Fire, um, predicting the Electros or hopefully the Guard Charm to resist, of course, that hit. It is unfortunate in that in that fashion, it's definitely this. The other big play that I think I really, really messed up was, of course, with Kyurem. Had I kept roosting, uh, I would have been able to take a Dragon Claw from Garchomp. Uh, had I had Outrage, it would have been able to KO me, yes. But my um, Tabofini would have been a much, much better area if that was the case. Plus, I would most likely have switched in Tabofini anyway and had a full HP Kyurem active. And that would have, of course, meant that he would have switched out to his Bulu. Um, but I would believe I would be able to play around it, even if so, it's just speculation at best. It, maybe he would have been able to push me back, but in the end, that won't necessarily matter. Uh, but yeah, I was frustrated. I do believe I missed two key opportunities to kind of find my way back. But in the end of the day, it comes back to just wronged Eevee in my Cortana, and it mattered in such a massive way because I lose Cortana for for all the wrong reasons. I really thought I was going to be able to sweep, yet did I, didn't I know, of course, that uh, I wasn't fully speed and uh, the guards about speeding me, who was a Scarf variant too, of course. So it is unfortunate, but at the same time, John win because he has the right sets and doesn't have messed any sets up. And that really has to be pointed on here. Plus, I think his, he playing way safe actually pays off in ways I never imagined, and that really has to be accounted for something. So John, Good game on you, and as stated here, I'm, I'm salty about the way I lost, but not to, to John itself. John himself really he did everything right, I just really, really was kicking myself or messing something so simple up. So anyway guys, thank you of course so much for watching, of course stay tuned for our week 3 battle. Until then of course, take care, bye.